zero. Okay. Hi, everybody. Julia Sansevier. Thanks for joining us on the Martin County Difference. We're about to go on the air at 1450 uh, STU. That's WSTU for Stewart. And also on uh, WSTUTV.com. And right now, gather your friends. We're on Facebook Live at the Martin County Difference. Hopefully that's where you are looking at me. You found it. And uh, But it's radio, it's on the web, and guess what? This week, I found out how to put it on podcast. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I'll be working on that more and more. But um, I finally, I think, I hope I finally figured it out. So we'll see. And um, so we're going to project loudly. I got a new logo. Do you see my logo, Alice? Well, Isn't that nice? Yeah. The oh, microphone. Do you have cool? someone design that? Yes. Yay. Yes. A good friend of mine, Tara Beak. Good. Tara oh, Beak. I know Tara. Creative. You know Tara? I know Tara. Yes. And she has the real estate book. Yeah. I love her to death. Yes. Um, 15 seconds. Okay. 15 seconds till we're on the air. I see we have someone has joined us. Cindy Wiley Rude. Hello. She says, hi, ladies. Yes, hi, hi, Cindy. <laughs> this is like, come on over and have a cup of coffee. Three. Two. Okay. One. Here we go on the radio. Wee. Opinions on this program are not necessarily those of WSTU Digital 1450. The opinions expressed are those of the program hosts and guests. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time now for the Martin County Difference with your host, dance and realtor Julia Sansevier. Hi everybody, good evening, Julia Sansevier, you're a dancing realtor and tonight we might see some <laughs> on the Martin County Difference. We've got a wonderful show. I'm so excited because I've got my sweet dear friend is back on the show. It is Alice Lockhart. Hi there, Julie. Hi. <laughs> and unfortunately, Barbara Osborne couldn't join her and I noticed I, I, I boo-booed and I put Barbara's here but not Alice, but it's <laughs> Alice, not Barbara. Yay. So Barbara had a family emergency. We hope her father-in-law, Mr. the other Mr. Osborne, will be fine. But she had to look in on him. He had a little health issue. So, uh, but you you were here a couple of weeks ago. Two weeks ago. May, about the Preservation History Month. And we're also going to have uh, Second Life Sanctuaries in the second half of the show. And they're a big event coming up. But um, I, just before uh, Alice and I start talking about your month of May, I just want to say I went to the Friday night dinner. I said I was going to go for Spam Robotics. It was so nice. And Senator Joe Negron was there. He's a major supporter. And Rebecca Negron, his wife, and she's on the school board. And two other members of the Women's Club of Stewart, Rusty Landgren and also Bobby Demers. And I were there. We were representing the Women's Club of Stewart, who donated quite a sizable amount of money to help the Spam Robotics team go on their trip. And you know, so we got a nice award. They got the Team Spirit Award, and they gave us um, a copy of that, which was very nice of them. <laughs> and it was exciting. It was at the Martin County High School, but this is all high school kids across Martin County, mm -hmm. and it's the ones who qualify to be in it. The graduating class, I was impressed to see, it was a great group of young men and one young lady oh yeah so come on you girls you can do the stem thing stem stands for I can't remember some technology uh, science technology um, maybe you know, electronics electronics and math yeah. right so very very cool and then tomorrow real briefly I'm going to talk about real estate a little bit I'm going to Washington DC Ooh, nice yes the seat of our nation's capital you got a lot of people up there right? that's right I'm gonna say make sure you tune in to my show <laughs> <laughs> now I'm actually going for real estate um, the realtors believe it or not we don't just sit around and have lunch you know and go to open houses um, we do work for homeowners causes and for the nation and we have talking points and so I'll be going up there we'll be meeting with Congress uh, C Congressman Mast Brian Mast who is now representing our district 18 um, you know but we've got tax reform on the on the uh, as one of the topics and we need congressional action on that yeah. we've got national flood insurance program we need congressional action on mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. And to protect sustainable home ownership, we need congressional action on that. So 
those are some of the talking points that we'll be going up there and meeting with our legislators. So I'll be up there Thursday and Friday and Saturday and come back Sunday. Oh, nice. Meeting with lots of other realtors from around the country, and it's a great time to get a perspective on what's going on around the country. And the, it, it's good news, that's why I just want to say, I like to do a little bit of real estate and, and bring you some good news, that um, you know we're still down in inventory, and uh, that's okay, but it's not as good as having enough inventory. So it's making the prices go up, so that's creating a heated market mm. a little bit, but that's well. okay. And last but not least, off real estate. Now today is the 17th of May. Mm -hmm. It's the great give right. day. I want to make sure, since this is the Martin County difference, we're all about giving and caring and loving. If you've got a favorite charitable organization out there and you haven't heard of the great give, now is the time to go find out about it. You've got a few hours left. It started last night at midnight. It runs till midnight tonight. It's 24 hours and you can give to whatever you know uh, charitable organization of your choice. I have a couple of special ones that I love. Um, one of them is my friend, uh, Lynn Barletta, asked me if I'd spread the word from the Visionary School of Arts because I did have her on here. She has started something to fight the human trafficking that is going right here in Martin County. And it's called Catch the Wave of Hope. So if you'll go on to their website, Catch the Wave of Hope, or if you'll go to greatgiveflorida.org, that's all you need to do. You can choose your organization now. Of course, Molly's House. I love all these people. They've been on the show. House of Hope and also um, Habitat for Humanity. And this morning at our office at Coble Banker, we donated $1,000 each to House of Hope wow. and Habitat for Humanity from the money we've raised just in our office. So that was our part of the day that made me feel good. And they're going to be here next week, so I'm yeah. excited to have them. I love Good. both of those people. Good. So, yeah, Margo and Rob. Anyway, so back to Alice, back to the show, and tell us what's been happening, enactments and things Okay, in the all kinds of different events and places and speakers, and we've had a good turnout. Good. One of the big things was on the 9th. When we yes. showed the movie, oh, yeah, the movie, Gentle Giant, yes. we had a good turnout. Everybody commented how much they really, really enjoyed seeing that movie. Because it's not only a great story, but it was wonderful scenes of what Fort Salerno looked like ah. in the 1960s. <laughs> and I had a couple people behind me were saying, wait a minute, I know that place, I know that place, oh, I know who that is, you know. So, th you know, that yeah. showed you that there were a lot of people who remembered, even though... You know, that's over 50 years ago. Yes. A lot of that still stays the same. So we had great turnouts on that. And uh, everyone has been looking forward to the different events that they wanted to participate or to visit. Uh, we had a great one today. Uh, we have every Wednesday right. at the Captain Sewell's house. Right. We, Tell everybody where that is. Okay. You take Indian River Drive to Indian River uh, Side Park. Right. It's where uh, the mansion of Tuckahoe is located. You go past Tuckahoe, and there is the Captain Sewell's house. And it's adorable. It's wonderful. And you got to remember, this was built in the 1890s. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's had a little restoration. Yeah. You'd need that much, too. Yes. <laughs> it's a gentle old lady. Yes. But anyhow, it's Sandy Thurlow who does that. And uh, we have uh, Barbara uh, Osborne and her husband, Bruce, who portray Captain Sewell and his wife, Abby. Oh. And it's as if it was the 1920s. Authentic so costumes. Authentic costumes, wow. their attitude, their talk, relating to different things. It's just fabulous. So they were there today, oh. and they'll be there next Wednesday also. And then the last tour is the very end of the month is uh, May 31st. So it's always Wednesday okay. at noon. At so noon. You can't miss that. That is so good. So good. Um, then some of the other is things. Is there a fee for that? Price? No. All of these things are free. The only thing we had to charge for was the movie to pay for the rights and the use of the, you know, Lyric Theater. But everything else is free. So that's wonderful. And that's why it makes it open to everybody across the, the county to come see these things. Now, we've got tomorrow, on the 18th, we have at the House of Refuge, right on Hutchinson Island, there'll be a rededication by the Daughters of the American Colonists uh, of a historic marker. You know, we always like to mark mm. any of our historic buildings. And the House of Refuge is our oldest building. Oh, wow. Across the county. That is number one. 1870s it was built. Now, remember, you had a whole series of these houses of refuge up and down the East Coast. That's right. The only one left is the one on Hutchinson Island. So that's neat. Yeah. And, of course, it was originally a museum after it stopped being that and the Coast Guard didn't need it anymore. 
it became a museum in the 1950s and then until the Elliott was built uh -huh. and then so it's still a museum but not carrying all kinds of things like the Elliott did right. later on. Right. So it's, it's tied in. The Historical Society runs the Elliott and the House of Refuge. Wow. So there's going to be a special dedication of a historic marker mm -hmm. there at the House of Refuge. So that will be tomorrow uh, on the 18th, 18th at 10 a.m. Sorry to miss it. I'll be yes. on a flight to Washington <laughs> with my friend Katie Foot Bourgeois, who says hello. Hi. Hi, Katie. <laughs> See you in the morning. <laughs> she's tuning in while she's packing. She's lucky. She gets to pack. I'm doing a radio show. I've got to go on the back. All right. Keep on. Also on Thursday, tomorrow, at yeah. 10 o'clock, between 10 and 2, if you go down to Hope Sound, right there in Apollo Street, you can tour, there'll be tour guides there, of the Apollo School. Oh. It was a school for the children down in Hope Sound, built in the 20s, went on to serve for many, many decades, and has been preserved and saved, and they even have the seats, they have the windows, I mean, you just, you get that feel right. of what the school was like inside. So, so it's a single uh, one room. well no two two, two. 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 Like little house on the prairie remember the team oh, show yeah. the little house on the prairie and it was a one room schoolhouse yeah. so this is got, actually two we got two nice. so it's neat so they'll do a tour on that one it's not always open so you know you got to take advantage of when some of these right. are open also on Thursday <laughs> this is at 6 p.m. I will be presenting I have a PowerPoint on lots of vintage photos Stewart Jensen oh. Palm City Hope Sound Salerno and I, you know, narrate and tell about the stories and explain everything. Right. And I just take people through a lot of these different places of what it looked like, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. I think know? it's so fascinating. Because nice. going to Cuba and I saw the classic cars, you do feel like you're in an old movie. Mm -hmm. So when you come across something like that in Stewart in Martin County, it really takes you back and you just can envision... Thank goodness we have mosquito spray now. I yes. can't imagine being back then. <laughs> but they did survive it. Yeah. And that's neat, too, because I have a lot of pictures of what people looked like oh. back then. So you see the men and the women, how they were dressed, so it's pretty neat. Yeah. It's at 6 o'clock at the Blake Library okay. in the Armstrong Room, which is the big uh, auditorium the big there. Auditorium, right. So again, free, open, uh, get there as soon as you can um, to get your seat. And, and that one's tomorrow? That's tomorrow at okay. 6 o'clock. It'll, it'll go by the time we finish everything with questions and answers till about right. 7.30. Right. Now, also will be available, and you can see it right over here, is a, a illustration of my book on Stuart. So what I've done is pretty much the same idea which you're going to be seeing in the presentation at the Blake. I did up a book, was asked by Arcadia Publishing, to do a book on historical photos. Now, this one just is of Stuart. Ah. So it doesn't have the Palm City, whereas I will present about Palm City and others. But this is just Stuart photos. Wow. It takes you from the very beginning up until the early 50s. So wow. it's a great book. It gives a complete story of each photo. What I did is I talked to a lot of the pioneer families here. Uh -huh. And I said, this is what I'm doing. What do you have? So a lot of them gave me their collections to scan. Ooh. And so you have photos in there that I know no one has seen unless you have seen the book. Right. Mm -hmm. So... Yes. So the book is available, will be available at the Blake. I'll have uh, Barbara will hopefully be there Good. and sell the book for and me. And you'll do autographs too, right? Yes, I can do uh, autographs. That's <laughs> special. That is special. And they're also available at the Stewart Heritage Museum. Okay. So if you can't make it, do stop by and pick up one Monday through Sunday, 10 to 3 at the museum. Okay, great. And it's a very fair price. Mm -hmm. It's like $20, $21? $23. That's tax and everything. Okay. And again, it's because there's so many photos in it, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nothing but photos. I think I have roughly a little better than 200 photos in there. Wow. That a pictorial is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to the Heritage Museum and they have the picture of mm -hmm. how the street looked with the railroad. Yes. No fence around it and all the old stores. Each, and they're on the top of, I think, the, um, they're on the top of the Triangle Building. Yes. It's no more there. It's not there anymore. Right. And you're trying to envision what's what. It's, it's really a neat kind of contest, a little test in your brain. But that's what neat about the book, too. I don't do before and after. I do pictures right. that are vintage, but a lot of them are still there. The buildings, yeah. the Faroe building, uh -huh. where Larry Stewart, the attorney, is located. Yeah. I take you through the different years of what that Faroe building looked like and what businesses were there. Cool. See? So you can you can envision, you know, still there all this time and what's happened to it over the years. Oh. So it's pretty good. So what was the name of Stewart? 
before it was oh, stolen. Oh, you yeah. know. Frank knows. He just wants me to tell yeah, the story. Yeah, and a funny name. It <laughs> right? is a great story. It's a well, great story. Well, again, we had a lot of uh, people coming here in those early years, the 1880s, 1890s, and a lot of them were from Germany. Uh -huh. They came just, you know, new, fresh start. Right. And a lot of them, particularly from an area known as Potsdam in mm -hmm. Germany, a real town mm -hmm. named that. And so when it came time to give a name, there was enough people that we could have a post office. The post office says, you got to give it a name. Uh -huh. So they said, how about Potsdam? So the post office approved of it. Also with the train coming through, you know, the sign put on for this uh, uh, train station was uh -huh. Potsdam. Everybody approved. Nobody had any problems with it. What who did have problems were the engineers of the train. As they would come, and they always called out the next city that they were stopping at, they, instead of saying Potsdam, they said, damn Pots! <laughs> <laughs> well, that just upset a few ladies and a few gentlemen, too. So they said, oh my gosh, what can we do? What can we think of something that can't be screwed up by these guys? <laughs> so um, there was a gentleman there named Homer Stewart who had property and was near the station. And they thought, Stewart, let's see. Can't mess, mess that up too bad, can we? Okay, how about... That. And so everybody agreed we'd call it Stewart. But we do still have an area in downtown Stewart uh -huh. where there's not only businesses but uh, houses. And a radio station. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> you're right. We're, we're seated in this. Here this is are. called the Potsdam Neighborhood. Right. Oh my goodness. Still today. Katie likes that. She spelled Potsdam with the N on the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and here we are, right in old Potsdam. Yes. So we have a lot of these kind of stories, you know, that kind of make up our history. True, right. we don't have the history that Boston and Philly have, but we're trying to save what we do have. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. which is such a great thing. I mean, if you don't know where you've been, you won't know where you're headed. Right. Very good. Thank you. And, and then on Saturday, we got to go through our list oh, here. Yes, Saturday yes. from 4.30 to 6 will be an open house at the Clifton Possum Long Nature Center. That's where the Audubon Society mm. is. It's right off of Palm Beach Road. Mm -hmm. Been there a long time. It's an old building there, originally from Camp Murphy. And they have a wonderful tour they can show you there of the things of nature, plants and trees that have been saved. So it's a very good tour. So you don't want to miss that if you've never been. So that's on uh, Saturday, 4.30 to 6. Good. Again, free, open to the and public. And that's really about the only thing on Saturday, right? Yes. Yeah. See, some days you'll see a lot of things. Some right. days we just have, you know, one or two. But that's good. Yeah. And then, as I said, next Wednesday, we've got the Captain Sewell's house again. All right, from 12 that's to at noon. Two. And what is this? Don't they, you have something 10 to 12 at the Little Heritage Museum, coffee for regulars or something? Oh, yes. Now, that's not part of our, yeah, it's not part of this, oh, you know, part of but this we month. do it all the time. Uh, yeah, Summer, that's, winter, whatever. I didn't know. I'm going to have to head down there for coffee one morning. It's yes. on Wednesdays, right? Every Wednesday. I love that. Summer, winter, doesn't matter. Goes from ten to noon. Okay. Free coffee and Danish and donuts provided. My goodness. And you just get to socialize with the people there. That's you never sweet. know who you're going to run into. Yeah. It's not always the same people. A lot of variation yeah. over the months and ah. you know who comes. But we usually have a full house. Yeah, I would say full so. house. Yes. My goodness. Okay, so, so that's at the museum. At the museum. Right? Yes. The little little feed museum. Right. Right there on uh, Flagler. Right. Okay, then we have on Thursday, the 25th of May, from right. 11 to 2, mm -hmm. this is down in Salerno now. Again, okay. covering about the schools, this was for the blacks in Salerno. Mm -hmm. You get dates back to the 30s and covered into the 40s and the 50s, and that has been beautifully. Now, that is a one-room schoolhouse. It really uh -huh. is. And this one has the seats done up, and oh, uh -huh. oh that, you really want to know what a one-room, that is it. So you've got to see that. Plus, they have a film to show telling more about the history. It's a it's mm. a great thing to see. I've been forced to it several times, and it's just wonderful. So don't overlook that. That's from 11 to 2. It's not the whole length. You can come right. whenever you need to. Okay, good. And it's on uh, Murray Street right down in Salerno. It's easy to find, and good. there'll be signs out there. And there will be a documentary film there? Yes. Okay, yeah. Mrs. Williams School. Right, because oh. she was one of the main teachers. Okay, and, and the actual former students? A lot of the former students act as guides. Oh, my goodness. Yes, that's, so they can tell that's stories. That's really touching history. Yes. So it's a good way, another showing that we're preserving every aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, you might drive past it and never know until you take that time to stop and go in. Yes. And that's what we're opening up on that. Good. Then we have, again, uh, Memorial Day is May 29th. Right. Okay. And every year, the city of Stewart, for the last number of years, has been recognizing not just our veterans, but our very, very, very special veterans. I'm talking about boys that grew up here in Martin County, went off to serve, and now had lost their life in war, 
and there's a special new uh, monument. It's right by the flag, right by the arch there in Memorial Park, and they will be putting plaques, bronze plaques, with the ones that are being honored. And oh. Every year, a new name will be honored. It didn't matter what time period. Like the two that we'll be doing on this Monday, the 29th, one is uh, Private Homer Johns. Right, I remember. Grew up that. here. He was one of the early births in Stewart. You know, 1890s he was born. Wow. And he goes off to serve in France and is killed. He mm. does die there. In fact, he has to be buried there because of war going on. He can't even be brought back, his body. It's not till 1921 that his body's brought back and there's burial at Fern Hill. Oh. So this is a special plaque with his name and his service and his years. Yeah. Then the other gentleman is um, uh, Corporal Larry Brown. Again, grew up here, but a whole different time period. He then goes to the Vietnam War, serves there, he volunteered to go, and he is caught in fire with the enemy and is killed from oh. that. Mm -hmm. So this is a special, special, special thing that really City is. of Stewart is doing. Honoring, of course, all veterans, right. but yes. particularly now showcasing Calling attention that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. really have from local boys that, right. that gave it their all and yeah. private harold johns from world war one and corporal larry brown from the vietnam war yes and this is a solemn occasion i spoke to a friend of mine who's a gold star mom and you know it sometimes it only means hot dogs to people in their backyard grilling this is a solemn occasion memorial day we are remembering our fallen soldiers you know so and what we do too is we invite the family, the descendants. Ah. You know, now many of them, of course, didn't have children, right? But they had, you know, nieces and nephews and so on and so forth. People who stayed in the community, the Johns family did and the Brown family did. Huh. So they will be there too. We will be in the parade. Oh. They'll be in special seating. They'll be there for the ceremony and the unveiling. Wow. So yes, that's amazing. Yes. So that's just part of what Memorial Day, and that'll be roughly with the parade starting at 10, and then there's the uh, memorial ceremony, and then the special dedication, which will happen around noon, okay. all at Memorial Park. Oh, that's wonderful. And it starts, does it, where does it start? So people the can parade, go down by what was the old uh, school, which is High School Avenue, uh -huh. uh, near the Layton Building, the new Layton uh, yeah. offices right. and, and uh, townhouses they're building. It's right on East Ocean, it'll follow up East Ocean, and then come into Memorial Park. Oh, that's nice. It's not too long. Yeah. Oh, everybody lines the streets yeah, and waves, waves and the flags. there's flags everywhere and there's all kinds of vintage cars. So if you're into cars, ah. you get to see those. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. I think people should bring their children and teach them a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. It would be great. So go ahead. Yeah, I think you're winding down. That's it. That's it. Other than the last well, time the last would Wednesday, be the 31st. Right, third first right. would be Sandy Thurlow who's done this again, not just this month. She's on tour doing that house since January, every right. Wednesday. That's incredible. So this 31st will be her last day, ah. and then we'll see if she wants to pick it up again and do it next January. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that would be nice. And also new at the museum, did you talk about this yet? The three new Florida wilderness, wilderness paintings. No. Kevin Hutchinson. Right. Uh, they Touch were, on that. They were located, he had done them a number of years ago, and they weren't about to be thrown away, but they were just, just not being displayed, oh. not being shared. They were okay. just kind of back along the side of a building. So we got permission and we brought them here. We got Kevin's permission to, to display them. And we gotta remember, we have three levels to that museum. We have an upstairs, right. which is what the house looked like or the apartment for the uh, manager of the uh, feed store. Then you have the main floor and then we have the basement. Ah. And the basement is big. That's for our big items. Like these three gigantic paintings done by Kevin that go right with all our stuff on fishing and hunting, Ooh. things that, you know, are very much a part of Martin County history. Oh, I'd love to go see that. Beautiful and, paintings. And Cindy Wiley Rude, she says her mom goes and has coffee. Yes. She loves it. <laughs> yes, she does. That's Joe and uh, uh, Lois Wiley. Uh -huh. They love it. Joe is a native oh. of Stewart. Yes, that's yes. where I found out from having Cindy on the show. Yes, like, a native. It's rare, but you get, you do find them, little rare birds here. Aren't you, yeah. Cindy? My, you sweet my husband's a, a native. Ah. Yeah. Born at Martin Memorial when it was still tiny. <laughs> oh my goodness, my gosh. And then and then, didn't you have somebody, Mary Walton Jones, did you mention her? She well, presented the title She was given, the, she is our executive director yeah. for the Stewart Heritage Museum. Right. And she was chosen by the Historic Preservation Board for this year, 2017, 
to be the number one historic preservationist of the year. Wow. And they've only had a few. It started in 2011. Oh, Sandy okay. Thurlow, mm, getting that one then. One. We have Joe Crankshaw for all his articles he wrote over the years. Okay. He was given the next year. Um, we have a couple, I didn't bring the list, but we have a couple others. Uh, Greg and myself were given it I, right. <laughs> in 2013. And well deserved. Yeah, for our vignettes that we write and the, the things that we're trying to preserve. So we, we try to keep this up and recognize those who've done the extra step along the way. Which is valuable. Um, you know, I go back to Texas and we have lots of heritage there, of course. Yeah. And I've always enjoyed that, um, whether it's going to an old home like the Henry Sewell home or going to a little museum like our feed store museum, which is so adorable. I love taking people there. I'm like, this is what you need to see before you go anywhere else. Exactly. It's so amazing how much was collected there mm -hmm. and what they did. Because the Elliott's nice, but it's about old cars and other collections. But I love the museum because it's about Martin County. It's about the people that made it happen here. It's it's the landmarks, you know, and I just, I like that. I like that about old photographs. So I can't wait to see your book. <laughs> well, that's what we tried to do. And again, just of Stewart. But with the museum, that represents a lot of places throughout the county. So right. it's not just Stewart, no, Illinois, Stewart Mark, Heritage. It, yeah. yeah, no, it's Jensen. Jensen and, and Hope Sound, all of And it talks about the pineapples and the mm -hmm. chrysanthemum industry here and everything. So I think that's wonderful. And um, last but not least, let's see, I had another thought in my head. And where did it go? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, but is this the, this isn't the first time that you've done this. This oh, is no. going to be every May. Every right? May, because throughout the country, it's Historic Preservation eh, Month. Right, I think you yes. said that a couple yes. weeks ago. Right. But, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. The actual the Turtle C Mansion at Turtle Creek, the mansion Tuckahoe. Tuckahoe, yes. Turtle Creek to Dallas. I'm talking <laughs> Texas. Tuckahoe. Tuckahoe, right. Give us a little background on that. People always ask me, like, what was that? And was it somebody's home? Well, you really have to go back even farther. You go back okay. to those early years, the 1890s. And because it's such a high mound, if you've ever noticed yeah. that, right over the river, it's a beautiful location. Right. And you had a, the Racy family that actually built on there. They had a beautiful home, had for years, until it caught fire in 1921. Oh. And they had left then, and you know, after losing their home. And right. It, was, it just left empty for a long time because it was just in ruins. Mm. And then you had the Leach family, which is of Coca-Cola fame mm. out of Atlanta, uh, wanted to, they loved that hill, that area, so they said, we'll clear this and we'll build our own mansion, which they named Tuckahoe. And so it was Mrs. Leach, who was well known throughout all kinds of things in Martin County, especially the Garden Club. She started that in Martin County. Oh. And uh, they eventually then by the 50s moved to Palm Beach. Okay. But the mansion stayed there and it was used by other organizations like FIT and you had a nunnery there and lots of different things have been used over those years since the Leach family left. And then eventually the county was able to acquire it, fix it up, and now it's open for tours and it can also be used Let's say you had a, a bridal shower oh, yeah, or weddings. a wedding. Yeah, I've been to a wedding there. Yes. The Junior League had the uh, uh, the movies there, the uh, the Luna Fest, a couple of times, and everything. So, and just a little correction here. Uh, sorry, Cindy. It says Joe and Lois is her aunt and uncle. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yes. And also, Katie was born at Martin Memorial Hospital. Go, Katie. Katie <laughs> Foot Bourgeois. So I just want to thank Alice Luckhart again for coming back tonight. I, I felt like we didn't get enough time. There's never enough time yeah. to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> we could go on and on, but I do want to bring in my other guests, and um, that's the Second Life Animal Sanctuaries. So thank you so much, Alice. Thank you, Julie. And we'll do this again. And I'm going to do a little sponsoring. I've got some sponsors I want to thank for helping me put this show on the air. So thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Bye. And it's TC Palm Home Inspections. They are a family-owned and operated home inspection company. They serve St. Lucie, Martin, and Palm Beach counties. They are fully licensed and insured with the state of Florida. And they will perform complete home inspections and pre-listing inspections for home buyers and sellers, which I recommend. Come on in. They also do insurance inspections. You'll put, um, oh, look, he's got his poster, good. Um, so don't mind me, <laughs> we're, we're changing the set here. Uh, insurance inspections that include wind mitigation, four-point inspections, and roof certification. So call Gary Mulka at TC Palm Home Inspections at 772-678-8133 
and check out their website at tcpalmhomeinspections.com at 772-678-8133. And also, if you need a mortgage, Celia T. was sent in as a senior loan officer at East Coast Mortgage Lenders. She provides you the freedom to finance for all buyers, from first-time home buyers, business owners, and investors. She has over 26 lenders from which to choose so she can tailor a mortgage for you, for whatever your needs are. She consistently provides the clear to close. Oh good, thank you, my set decorator. <laughs> a welcome phrase to all well before the contract closing date. So if you think you can't afford a mortgage or you don't know if you can get one, call Celia. She's at 772-204-0817. That's 772-204-0817. So moving right along, we have a wonderful second half with some friends of mine. I recognize an old friend there. Da, 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 da. Elliot! How are you? <laughs> Hi, Elliot. Elliot Acosta is here. He was my dance partner in Dancing with the Martin Stars. So I said, I threatened on my promo this afternoon, I might do a little ballroom dancing in the, in the radio studio, but I don't think I will. I don't know. I've got some pros here. Don't want to, like, step all over myself. And... You know, we actually think it's an excellent idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're banished. <laughs> this is Steve Wilkie. He is also here for his wonderful organization that is, it sounds so intriguing, and it's to keep our sweet little animals alive and not have them be euthanized. And he's here with Christina Hunter, and she is vice president of the organization of this charity. And uh, Elliot got involved because what you're doing is this incredible ballroom dancing competition, kind of well, display, right, mm -hmm. at yeah. the Marriott. And it's in a month from today. That's why I had you on. Like, let's get the word out. So June 17th, look for that. It's called Peace, Love, and Ballroom. And so tell us about yourself, Steve. How did you get involved in, well, I know you were an instructor, right? So yeah. that part, I know, you told me. But how, tell us the transition between being an instructor and a professional dancer for 20 years into saving animals. Well, I had extra time, so I lived in West Palm Beach at the time. And okay. I decided to do some community volunteer work, and Peggy Adams Animal Shelter happened to be right by where I lived. So I could have easily worked with homeless or worked with veterans or worked with any cause, but the animals were close, so I did that. And when I went in, I was one of those people that would think that's just a cat or that's just a dog. Yeah. And their lives don't matter particularly all that much. I saw them as, um, well, unfortunately, like a lot of people still do. And uh, I, I didn't realize that they um, they think, they feel, mm. they're self-aware, they have fear, they have love, they have, you know, things a veteran pet owner already knows. But these animals have a will to live. They, um, they're they loyal, they get angry, oh. they get scared. Yeah. And, as I worked in the shelter, I realized the astronom astronomical number of healthy dogs and cats that are killed every day in shelters. And these are healthy animals. They, right. They, they just want to live. They just want a home. Yeah. And uh, so I rearranged my work schedule to free up time and uh, devoted myself to this unexpectedly. And uh, now I uh, put in crazy hours to build <laughs> uh, this organization to help them. I've got a wonderful group. Uh, we've got a couple of folks here who help us out, but we've got a team triple this size right now, working long hours, wow. all devoted to the cause of building an organization to provide support to other sheriff shelters and other, other groups. Um, we don't need any more animal shelters. We've got enough. Right. But they don't have all the resources and all the support they need. To, they, they don't want to kill animals, but what right. do you do when you've got limited resources, yeah. limited space? space. Even right. in no-kill shelters, what they have to do is turn animals away to kill shelters because they fill up immediately. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so our job is to um, help, well, uh, how fight, do you help? support. Do, where do they go? If there's no room in the shelter, do you have a place where you can take them? We are, that's one of the things we're working on. We've been up and running for about a year now, uh, since just over a year, when, when I got the idea for the organization. And these folks started helping me right away. That's great. And Christina, you're at First Citizens Bank. I am. And but is this your first venture in working with a charity? Yes, I've worked with other charities before, um, but this is the uh, first charity that I've really dove deep into and yeah. pretty much started. You know, I've, Steve 
uh, was a client of mine and came in. He oh. said, I have this idea, and I know that you love animals, and, you know, what do you think about it? And I said, it's absolutely great. I would love to be a part of this. Oh. And, you know, it just started with three of us, and now we have, you know, we have a huge group. I'd say about 15, 16, 20 volunteers plus. Wow, that's a lot. Yes. Well, you know, people love their animals. Yes. And what is it? Man's best friend is a dog, you know. And I love your poster back here, Second Life Animal Sanctuaries. You did a nice job on that. And your mission is simple, to end euthanasia of healthy cats and dogs in Florida. And your definition of healthy includes animals with treatable medical conditions. And your website is secondlifesanctuaries.com. Correct. I want to make sure people get the word out there, how to get in touch with you. And if they have an issue, you know, or they know of something going on, they can reach out to you. But do you regularly go to the animal shelters and well, talk to them? I'll, I'll tell you where we're at right now. Um, we started with, when we first started, I, I got support and help right away from wonderful people. But uh, 13 months ago, it was just me. I, I was in the bank, and they told me I qualified for uh, a credit card if I wanted to get one because ah. my credit was mm -hmm. good. And they told me the limit, and I did the math in my head and decided that was enough to start a 501c3. Ah. So we started with nothing but an idea a year ago. So all we've been doing right now is fundraise, study, learn, make connections with organizations. We're going to be launching and really getting involved in the community right after Peace, Love, and Ballroom on June 17th. Okay. We'll have the funds we need to really do some things, so we're working with feral cat programs in three different counties right now, all supportive roles. Good. We're not, we're not really working directly with the public. We're um, mm. supporting other organizations okay. and doing what they need. We're working with Coastal Boxer Rescue in Boynton Beach. We range from Boynton Beach to Fort Pierce, where we're okay, becoming involved area. right now. Right. And we're going to expand as needed. Um, we're, um, what well, else are we doing? I'll never forget how I met you. And it's that guy down there, Elliot Acosta. Hello, Elliot. How are you? I'm good. They threatened to, like, you should do your pose. But he was on the poster. I'm like, no. <laughs> In the picture, we, we could. We could do it afterwards. I'll we should do that lift. on air. Yeah, yeah, on air. No, we should do the lift. The lift, yeah. I'd like to see that. You could go to YouTube and see the lift. <laughs> Elliot lifted me last year at the dance, and uh, at the end of the dance. And I was excited because I'm like, lift, we have a lift, yes. And it came at the very last day or two of our rehearsals. And I met Steve through Elliot because we were rehearsing at the uh, Fred Astaire dance Fred studio, dance right? Dance. And um, you came in and you were talking over there in the corner and I was like, come on. Tapping my toe, let's go. <laughs> Time to waste it. And he's like, you should talk to this guy. You should talk to Steve. He's got something going on. And I had started my radio show then to raise the money for Healthy Start for the Dancing with the Martin Stars. So, of course, I was like, okay, sure. And you were in your infancy of starting that organization because we're talking back before July, because the event, it was in July, well, the event was September, my event, our event. But, so this was during one of those practice sessions, which was in the summertime. So like you say, you started this just about a year ago, right? Yep. Yeah, so that, I'm, I was in the ground floor. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> And here we are, and I was excited, and I went in, that's the other thing, Elliot is the best and the only person you should go to to fix your watch. Thank and, you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's right where the golf gear store is on US 1, right past Stewart News, if you're going north. And I, my watch broke one day, and my husband said, well, you know the best watch repairman in town. I'm like, oh, I do. <laughs> so I said, I just dropped by there one day, and you were there, and you fixed it, and thank you so much. So you're welcome. It, it makes me crazy if I don't have this on. So Elliot was there, and you had this, the flyer. I was like, well, what's this, Elliot? Are you doing dancing behind my back? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it all revealed itself. And I love the idea. I love animals. Um, I love dancing, watching it, uh, competing, I don't know. But so this is a ballroom dance competition and a show, dinner, <coughs> and an after party. Yes, and nobody like in our it, it is nobody in our organization gets paid anything. We're wow. all 100% volunteers, and we're going to do this big event, and then we're going to give all the money away. Oh, uh, we're going to give it to all these other groups and help them out. That's, I think, going to be our biggest role uh, initially is to help with financial support on different side projects. Good. These groups have to help the mission of uh, saving dogs and cats. Great. I know there are a lot of people out there who love their animals. 
and don't like anything near human, you know, animal cruelty. And there's just too much of that going on. But when you have an animal that's healthy, like you say, or it's treatable, and it gets put in a pound or something, it's just so sad somebody walks away and gives away their dog. I couldn't do that. A lot of the shelters right now in the state of Florida, and there's some great shelters that don't do this, but there's a surprising number uh -huh. that have over a 50% kill rate of the animals that are dropped off. Oh, them. my God. I read a Broward County article uh, today mm -hmm. uh, where they're at 52%, and this is... Uh, years after their commitment to, you know, to end euthanasia. That was, I think, 2012. Ah, so, so we're doing something about that. Please. I think that's great. Now, what does it cost for somebody to come to this? Uh, it is $95, Okay. and that is for the whole day if you want to pop in and watch the students compete. However, I would recommend members of the public come at 7 o'clock okay. and come from 7 o'clock to midnight. Yeah, the dinner is at 7. Yeah, we have an amazing professional show lined up. I can't wait. I might just, is Elliot in the show? Elliot's not in the show. Oh. He's dancing. He'll be with us. He'll be with me and other folks dancing with students competing. It's oh, going to okay. be students who are ballroom competitors. So there'll be see. some great competition stuff. But the show people we have. Right, the real professionals. We've got world title holders. Um, our main couple, they yeah. lead for Blackpool, England, a couple in the middle on the flyer. Oh, in the middle. Okay. They, they represent the United States in Blackpool and they leave Friday. Wow. Uh, they've, won, uh, they've won the world titles on two different circuits. They're active right now, and they were on so America's wonderful. Got Talent. Wow. Uh, this couple right here is number two in the U.S. on the Fred Astaire circuit for show dance. Mm -hmm. They're about to move on to number one. Um, it's going to be just brilliant, amazing dancing these folks will see. Uh, like, like I, I, I don't want to say this for sure. I've only lived in Martin County two years, but... I've never seen a show of this level okay. brought in. I don't think I won't we've be had anything. I'm nowhere near good enough. Okay. So well, I don't think we've had anything like this done live. We've had our show for six years that, I say our show, the Healthy Start Coalition, and that's an amateur and a professional paired right. up. This is two professionals, professional dancers, which is like going on TV and seeing it. It's great. And I've seen Healthy Start. Healthy Start actually has done some wonderful stuff. Oh, I think yeah. they have a great program. Yeah. Uh, do great, great performances. But we're importing uh, top pros who are doing nothing but there to that's do their shows. That's and be, so great. The show will run about 35 minutes of all professionals, nonstop, okay. no breaks. Wow. Just one routine after the other. And then we've got a great party after that. Afterward, yeah. Elliot's yeah, got his fun. DJ connections. Ah. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a great party, and that's going to go till midnight. That's when the Marriott throws us out. <laughs> okay. Well, and in fact, it was a year ago, yesterday or so, or so, Aubrey sent me a text. She goes, we surprised you a year ago. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it was. It was at the end of May, the middle of May, somewhere in there, when they brought balloons and said, you're going to be on Dancing with the Martin Stars. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and then I met Elliot shortly thereafter at the pre-party, and the rest is history. So um, from noon to one is smooth styling workshop. Does that mean people can come out and learn? That would be really bad if you haven't danced before. We've got oh, a mix okay. of things for beginners in advance. The person doing the workshop, she was ranked number two in the world last year for American Style Smooth. Wow. And it's going to be a very advanced workshop. So okay. if you can already do a Viennese waltz, and a couple of different styles of tango, you would really enjoy this workshop and get a lot out of it. Okay. If you're more of a social dancer that's never had lessons, you probably don't want to do that one. All right. And, and then two, so this is an older flyer, actually. Oh, it's an older flyer. Okay, so 2.30 to, okay. we're going to take a lunch break, yep. 2.30 to 6, we're going to be doing um, all the student numbers. That's pro oh, okay. like we had with, like you've done with yeah. Martin Stars. Okay. It's going to be a student and an instructor, and we'll be running two sessions. And each session will be a little over an hour, most likely. We're cool. still getting the entries. Right now, we're looking at 40 to 50 student dance routines. Really? Yeah. Oh, my, my, my. Yes, and we're also selling tickets. So if you want to just come and see the dancers during the day, uh -huh. and you come during that day, and uh, $20 and 15 before um, if you want to buy tickets. Oh, that's great. Yes. And we're also selling our tickets on our website, Second Life. Sanctuaries.com. If you go right. under the events tab, then okay. you can purchase the tickets under there. All right, that's a good thing to know. And Elliot, are you going to dance a little bit out there? Actually, I have two numbers dancing. <gasps> I'm dancing with my wife Marie. Oh, Marie! Oh, you guys look so good together. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm dancing with Emily Stone, oh. which I'm training right now. Okay, that sounds good. 
Well, and what time will you be dancing? We don't know yet. Okay. Be in the beginning? Dance. Yeah, in the beginning. Okay, so I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> Great. I want to make sure to come. That sounds like a lot of fun. But you have to go to your party because then we can dance. Oh, yeah, then the party. Yeah, and you can do the lift again. I have to practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and so you lived on the west coast of Stewart. But, I mean, uh, oh. Florida. Uh, not Stewart. West coast of Florida before, right? And, yeah. And traveled all around doing dancing. Right? Yeah, the second year, uh, the first half of my dance career, I was, uh, yeah, I, I competed a lot and I, I taught a lot. And then as I got older and things started to break, I became <laughs> a... <laughs> a business consultant for Fred Astaire. I came in and took schools that went bankrupt yeah. in the 06, 07 collapse and turned them around and I think that's fascinating. opened some things. Thank you. Yeah. And I've been applying all that business stuff I had to learn on the fly um, to this charity. And actually, that's where I learned how to fundraise. We bailed out a couple studios just by doing a fundraiser every week for different organizations mm. and all that community involvement helped us grow and I accidentally learned how to fundraise through a few that's years of that. Very impressive. And that, because that's, a job on its own, right? Oh yeah, and, you know, especially this, this project. I, 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 I don't know how the Goombe Bash people possibly do it. Yeah, I know, and I'm always asking sponsors in real estate as, as well, and for this show, and hey, by the way, if you'd like to sponsor the show, get in touch with me. <laughs> um, but we have an event for realtors coming up, and it's gonna be at the Marriott, and that's before your event, that'll be June, we'll be out of there by then, and we won't be in the way. <laughs> that's on June 1st and it's a big district-wide conference for realtors in this area and it's all about hot topics of real estate and we network and all this and it's the Women's Council of Realtors which I'm president of and for Stuart Martin County and we have other networks coming and so when I was dancing with you last year I wasn't president yet of this oh, so congratulations yeah it took on another <laughs> job you have nothing to do right i have nothing yeah. to do i but sleep at red light i see oh. yeah oh thank you i wake up in time for the green ones okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so how many animals have you been able to save and so far all yeah. we've done is organize okay. and raise Always. money okay. I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on it uh we, ha we have done some joint fundraising projects already to help out some individual charities that way but I believe when you open a business and start a business, the first year should be done to plan and build your starting capital yes. before you launch. Yes. That way you, you survive and make it. So we've been planning this. This took six months of really hard work to put together. Yeah, um, sounds like it. And uh, we're all set to take off and do all our real work in late June. Oh, uh, we're going to be working with Operation SOS. We're going to be working with a couple different TNR uh, programs, Feral Cats. We're working with um, uh, Coastal Boxer Rescue initially. Uh, we're actually, if this event goes well enough, we're gonna buy overflow land. Uh, we've uh, got a long-term project for dogs. That's my okay. dream. That's gonna take some time, it's expensive. And a short, shorter-term project for cats, less maintenance, easier to do, uh, yeah. more affordable. But we'd like to buy some overflow land for ranches for unadoptable animals mm -hmm. uh, so they can live out their life and, as opposed to um, you know euthanasia it's not enough to really make a real dent in the problem because there's so many animals being killed but we can make them educational facilities and really spread the word of what needs to be done by the community at large uh, adopting from the shelters instead of buying from breeders in the case of dogs oh. uh, having your cats spayed and neutered before uh, four months old as soon as they hit that three pound mark that's good because by six months old your cat's already producing kittens a lot of people don't realize it happens that quickly yeah and and the la that's the last thing you need is more kittens when you can't even deal with the cats that are already here. And by the way, Katie Foot Bourgeois says hello, Christina. Hi, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> so you know each other through real estate and banking, right? Well, well banking, uh, but also Goon Bay Bash. Oh, Goon yes. Bay Bash. Yes, right. okay. oh, the lifesaver. That's why you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, they work very hard, and they raise a lot of money. So yeah, it's yeah. good to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the nice thing. So I love the title. How did you come up with Peace, Love, and Ballroom? Well, <laughs> this whole thing evolved. Originally, it was going to be a 70s theme, ah. and it was going to be everybody dresses 70s, and we have a big 70s party, and only 70s dance routines, and uh, going with that whole Peace, Love theme, and just having a lot of fun with it. More and more people uh, ended up saying, hey, can we just 
wear normal clothes? Can we, can we, can we just dance to uh, regular music? We need music? no polyester. Yeah. 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 Yes, please. No bell bottoms. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we had a rebellion on our hands, so uh, <laughs> I did what I usually do, taped under pressure. And uh, <laughs> now it's just the title, for, but it's a fun title, so we've still got that. Oh, that's cute. Well, it's a lovely title, and it's the first annual. I like that. So by the time next year rolls around, you'll really be into full speed, full mode. And um, so th the silent auction, that's another thing I know. So this is at the Marriott Resort, Hutchinson Island, Saturday, June 17th. Kind of all day, but the part where the public really you want them to come is around 7 o'clock for dinner, 7 to 8. And 8 to midnight is the show and the after party. Right? Yeah, 8 o'clock is the show. And then when the show is finished, most likely it'll be done about 8.45. That's when the party starts. But that show will be mind blowing, and uh, people don't want to miss it. I want to go to that. I think that sounds so cool. I mean, the, the thing about doing Dancing with the Martin Stars that was so mind blowing is that we all sit at home and we watch the real deal on TV, and you see somebody go from not knowing what they're doing in the pro. They don't make. The, I mean, you do see behind the scenes a little bit. I have my own behind the scenes trauma. Elliot will attest to. And like, no, I can't do this. <laughs> and so, you know, it's really testing yourself. And I have such new respect, renewed respect, but really respect for dancers. It's such an athletic sport. I mean, you're just constantly in motion. I, mean, I never looked and felt better. And uh, I probably need to come back to Fred Astaire and trip around with you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> And so, do you dance? I do not. Oh, not at all. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Anybody else in the group besides you, the dancer and Elliot? And do you have other? Yes. We have uh, a couple of uh, a couple of our volunteers and uh, oh, okay. people who are on the committee are actually dancers who are going to do routines. Uh, everybody who dances with me, I'm doing a couple of them. They're not allowed to win any awards <laughs> because I, I don't think I'd beat some of these people anyway. There's some great dancers, so it gives me an easy out. But uh, since I'm running the event, it would look funny if any of my people scored the best. So we're just auditing. But that's actually saving my butt from uh, uh -huh. getting trounced by some of these better dancers coming in. Yeah, well, we have Vicente Martinez and Megan Murphy. And where are they from? They are from Boynton Beach. They were on America's Got Talent oh. a couple of years back. And they're the ones uh, representing America at the, in the World Championships. They cool. just started in Blackpool, England including the American divisions because they're becoming more popular in Europe. Okay. And they're going to be uh, representing us trying to bring home the title. They'll be competing in rhythm, which Very is the good. sexy stuff. Yeah, okay. And then Igor and Anastasia, Anastasia or Anastasia, Pusevich, how do you say that? <laughs> I say Pusevich, but, I, but okay. I might be wrong. Okay. I mean, I'm just well, that's guessing. closer than I got. So. <laughs> and they're, where are they from? <laughs> they, well, they, they came over from... Uh, Oh, and I'm going to get in trouble if they hear this. It's either Ukraine or Russia. I forget okay. which. But uh, they, they're they based in West Palm Beach. Okay, so we have people traveling in. and then the We actually have folks yeah. coming all the way from New Jersey. We've got oh two my. dance schools from New Jersey flying down to compete in this. Wow, and Galena Detkina? Yeah, Galena Detkina. Uh, she she, she retired workshop. last year okay. uh, from uh, competing. Uh, they were second in the world, so she stepped down at a pretty high level. Mm. And she found out about the event. She's normally very, very, very expensive, but she's an animal lover. Oh. And uh, she volunteered to do that workshop for free, and it's going to be a real treat for our veteran dancers. All our competitors are going to have a blast for How that. wonderful. Well, we just have a minute to go. I can't believe time has gone by so quickly. And I just want to say thanks to two more sponsors who are, have stepped up for me. Rivercrest Insurance, your local independent insurance agency. Started by Jeff and Nicole Meir in 2002. They specialize in personal lines of insurance. Call them at 772-463-3113. 772-463-3113. And also Francesca Morgan. Do not forget to stop by Francesca Morgan Interiors and buy something there. And 10% of the proceeds go to Molly's house through June. And don't forget, today is Great Give Florida. So go online and give to your favorite uh, nonprofit organization. And thanks for joining the Martin County Difference. I'll see you next week, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Thanks. Share this. Bye-bye. Okay, so we're off the air on the radio, but we can still talk on...
Facebook oh. right there and just everybody uh -huh. share this and this will be on YouTube later and uh, that's where it goes uh, to live and Katie okay. said good night thanks Katie good night good night Katie <laughs> and um, I'll see you in the morning Katie and she's right Goomba yeah <laughs> we're going to Washington together tomorrow morning so and I've got to get home oh. and pack and write a contract and what else hmm. <laughs> sleep <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve, and thank you, Christina, and thank you, Elliot. You're thank welcome. You. It's so thank good to see good. you again. Absolutely. I hope this too. is a big success and we keep having you back here. And especially, you know, go online and find secondlifesanctuaries.com. And uh, maybe even give to them and give Florida the big give, the great give. All right. So thanks, everybody. See you next week. And thank I will you. have House thank of you. Hope and Habitat for Humanity. And check this out on YouTube. That's awesome that you're doing this for the...